We are continuing to look at the general subject of physical properties of substances. We will be looking at two publications which have been published a long time since the 19th century, and they are just as important now as when they were first published. The first one is the Gamalent Handbook of Inorganic Chemistry. A little later, we will be looking at Beilstein, which covers organic chemistry. But this lesson focuses just on the Gamalin Handbook. At the top bullet point, I've listed what kind of substances are covered in this handbook. And it goes beyond physical properties. It's occurrence, preparation, and reactions both elements and their compounds. It's not always an easy division between what is organic and what is inorganic. That's why coordination compounds, which are mostly organic, but the metal in coordination compounds is the most important part of the compound. That's why coordination compounds are covered in gamelin. The same thing with organometallics. The metal is so important, they're covered here rather than in Beilstein, which covers the other organic compounds. The aim was to cover every important reference in inorganic chemistry. It goes back to 1772, the very beginnings of chemistry. As I point out in the second bullet point, it's called the Gamelin Handbook because there was a real chemist. His name was Leopold Gamelin. There were his years. He started the handbook during his lifetime, and it was continued by the Gamelin Institute, a nonprofit organization, until 1997. They ran out of financial support in 1997, and that's when the printed handbook ended. In the next several slides, we'll see the continuation of this in an online database. The third bullet point points out one or the type of organic compound which is covered in gamelin. These are perfluorocompounds. compounds. Think of a compound that has carbon, some other elements, and hydrogen. If all the hydrogens are replaced by fluorine, it's called a perfluoro compound. Per means maximum possible substitution. Those compounds are in this handbook. The most useful feature of the handbook is just like we saw in the NIST webbook, only critically reviewed data is there. So when you find a reference and its properties, you don't have to look any further than that. Getting a little bit back to what happened after 1997, there is a database called Reaxis. It used to be known as Crossfire. It contains Gamelin as well as Baustein. We do not have it at CUNY. We came very close to having it a few years ago, but the over $30,000 a year was more than the college and the university can afford, so we never got it. A lot of other universities do have it. Here is what the printed books look like on the shelf. This is the collection at City College. When you get to your campus libraries, you will see if they have these volumes also. It originally was printed only in German. We'll see a little later what editions and what volumes are in English. But when you look at the bindings, you want to be able to identify when you pick up a book exactly which book it was, because each element has its own series of books. And when you use a book, you want to be able to go back to it. That's why you see all these indications that identify the exact nature of the book. Again, you see the German. You see the German abbreviation, which is often the only thing you see on, on the book, and you see the English translation. Again, it's only so you can make a note of what each book is, so if you want to go back to it. Here I am only looking at the printed volumes. 
it was in many editions. Only the eighth edition, which started in 1922, is used today. That's all you will see in any library. Before 1950, it was entirely in German. A lot of the old chemical literature was in German, which is why until about 30 years ago, every chemistry student had to learn German. Starting in the 1950s, they started putting some English in the margins and at the beginning in some tables of contents. After 1992, all the books are only in English. The problem is, starting in the 1980s, is that very few libraries in CUNY have these newer English books. The reason for that is starting with Governor Mario Cuomo, then Governor George Pataki, and continuing with Andrew Cuomo, these three governors have cut back the funding of CUNY, and we cannot afford to get all the things that we really need. There is also a formula index, which I will point out in one of the next few slides. There is also a database. This is on STN. Remember in the very first lesson, I talked about the different ways of searching chemical abstracts. And one of them is where you pay for each search. The same thing for the Gamelan Handbook in its STN version. It's expensive. You can see in the first bullet point how much it cost. It goes from 1772 right up to 1975 where it has data from the handbook. After that, it continues from 1975 to 1997, where it has data from selected journals. We will see that the Reaxis, which is a subscription product, has data newer than 1997. This STN version does not contain everything that's in the printed handbooks. The printed handbooks has a lot of words and a lot of printed description, only mostly the basic physical properties are in the STN database. So it's not really a substitute for the printed handbook. This is a sample record from the STN database. It's the brief display of this sample record. You would display this brief display and then decide which one of these fields you want to dis also display. It costs money to display each one of these individual fields separately, and it can get quite expensive. So you don't want to display fields of data that you don't really need. This is what a sample record from the Reaxis database looks like. As I pointed out before, and I will mention again, it also includes Baustein. Because of its cost and the deep funding of CUNY, we do not have it. It has all the data from the handbook, from the printed handbook, and it includes data from 1975 to the present from 62 important primary literature journals. So it keeps Gamelin up to date. In the remaining slides, I am showing you how to use the printed handbook, because this may be the only version of Gamelin you have access to. Not everybody can afford Reaxis. If you are looking up data for a specific element, you just go to the book with that element. Basically, it's one series of books for each element with a few exceptions. The first exception is that all the gases on the last column of the periodic table are in system number one. Another exception is that all the rare earth elements are in one series. You will see that on the right hand side in system number 39. It's kind of insulting to inorganic chemists because each one of these rare earth elements is distinctly different but a lot of people lump them all into one category. The other exception 
for one element, for one series of books, are the transuranium elements. You can see that on the bottom right-hand side of this chart. So looking up a discussion of an element, you just go to that series of books. For compounds, you have to follow the system that's on this page. It's a range, so not all of information gets shoved into just one or two books. I'll just go through the examples that are on this page. If you're looking up HCl, you see H has a system number of two, chlorine has a system number of six. The compound is always in the book with the higher system number. So HCl is in system number six on the chlorine. As you're looking at the halogens, look under bromine and you see the symbol J. That is the German symbol for iodine. The whole rest of the world uses I. They use the old J, which is the German name next to it. As you go down the list, you'll see ammonium. It's counted as its own system. Because if you think of it, it's like a metal because it forms so many different kinds of salts. Getting back to where compounds are located, the second example is zinc chloride. You see that chlorine is number six. Zinc is further down at number 32. So again, it's always in a series of books with the highest system number. So zinc chloride is in system number 32, the books about zinc. The two other examples are similar. You can see where chromium chloride is and zinc chromate. Always looking at the highest system number for any compound, and you'll find it in that series of books. The top of this slide just describes what I talked about in the previous slide. In the middle of this slide, you can see some useful aids, some websites which help guide you to which volumes of Gamalin will be useful for what you are looking up. For this slide, I just picked a book randomly off the shelf at City College and looked at the title page. You can see it's on niobium. It has its system number toward the bottom of the page, and it says tile B4. Again, you don't really have to know what the German tile and B stands for, but you would write it down as a way to identify it in case you wanted to come back to this book. Whenever you are looking at any book in the Gamalin series, you want to know what period of time the literature is covered in that book. You cannot just look at the date the book was printed because it takes time to gather the data, review it, and then put it in the book. There's always a delay between the time that's covered in that book and the time the book is printed. Fortunately, there is an easy way to tell what time period coverage in that book ended. As I point out at the top of this slide, there are usually two title pages for each book. You turn over the second title page. You don't have to know German for this. You see the word literatur and you see a year. So for this particular book, the literature is covered until 1971. And that is much more important than the publication date of the book. This is one of the newer books in Gamalin, and the table of contents is totally in English. For all the books in Gamalin, you could see that the table of contents is very detailed. By looking through it, you can find your compound and exactly which property you want to know about that compound. This particular book was published during the transition period when it was partly in English and mostly in German. You can see the text is in German and the notes on the right hand side, which are very useful, are in English. And you can see that besides just giving physical property data, it gives discussions and more in-depth review 
of the compound and its properties. You will notice that every data point has a complete literature reference. There is also a cumulative formula index, which is a useful aid and only a useful aid. Two reasons why you cannot rely totally on it are that it is not as complete as the tables of contents at the beginning of each book. The other reason is that we have previously talked about the Hill system, the very systematic way of organizing compounds. As I point out here, not all the compounds follow the Hill system. You may not be able to find a compound which is in the formula index because it's not listed as it should be. So again, just use this as a supplement, but always rely on the tables of contents of each individual book in addition to this formula index.